So today we're doing a Q&A all about the PhD in Culture and Performance at UCLA so you can decide if this is the PhD program for you. As a student who is currently a PhD student at UCLA, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk a little bit more about my program. So I wanted to start off with a specific overview with this Q&A. And first question is, what is your degree or what is your department? So I am getting my PhD in culture and performance in the world arts and culture slash dance department. How long is the program? Well, generally if you look online or read our student handbook, it says anywhere from four to six years is normative time. And what normative time means is you are following the progression that they expect their graduate students to do as successful PhD students. So in the handbook, it says as short as four years, but within normative time, if you are progressing successfully, you would graduate within six. I will say though, this is generally just a guideline. I have been in this program for a good amount of time now. This is actually my fifth year, and I can honestly say I have never met a single person that's graduated in four years. I have, on the other hand, met people that have graduated within eight and 10 years. So it really is more about your progress, your relationship with your committee and your faculty, and what your project necessitates for you to know what is your time to graduate or time to degree. Now I do have a video all about what slows you down as a graduate student and why it takes so long to graduate. So if that interests you and you want to graduate in a swift manner, then that will be linked in the description below. Do you need a master's to get a PhD in culture and performance at UCLA? No, you don't. In fact, what is most likely going to happen if you don't have a master's degree is that you will be expected to complete a master's while completing your PhD. So your PhD would be in culture and performance, but as a student who is entering the program without a master's, you would simultaneously be working towards a master's in world arts and cultures. And so it's important to know that even though it's not required to get admitted, it is required to graduate. But as a PhD program, they have integrated that process into the PhD program as to not slow you down, but to also make sure you meet those requirements. You will graduate with a master's and a PhD by the time you finish between the four or six year mark if you're progressing in normative time. Now I understand that the department is called World Arts and Culture slash dance. So a lot of people are interested in knowing, do you have to have a dance background to get into this PhD program? Absolutely not. I applied to this program and had no concept about anything dance related. And even though I've been in this program of taking some of the courses and things to that nature that do talk about dance, I will say I probably know a little bit less than an undergraduate student who does study dance. And that's just because it's called the World Arts and Cultures slash dance department. So the department itself is really open to people that are studying arts, people that are studying cultures, as well as dance. So if you are a dance scholar, this is a wonderful program for you. But if you're not, you wouldn't necessarily not be included or admitted into the program because you don't know anything about dance. I knew nothing about dance. So you totally still could be applicant that is successful or competitive in this program without any dance background. What are the basic requirements for this program? So most PhDs in the US have a very similar structure or expectations. And I do have a video all about that that's in the description below. But generally with the PhD in culture and performance at UCLA in the World Arts and Cultures Dance Department, um, we have certain expectations that may vary a little bit different, but generally still follows what any traditional uh, program would have across the US. So you are expected to take at least two years of coursework. And within those two years of coursework, you have to take four core courses within your department. So from there, you're able to take different electives and look at different departments and find support in those ways from different classes. But generally, we have four courses that you have to take within your department, and you have to take about two years worth of coursework. After your two years worth of coursework, you'd be expected to complete your language exams and your comprehensive exams. So within our department, it is slightly different than others. This is where it kind of varies. For our comprehensive exams, you are expected to have a written exam and an oral exam. And our written exam is done over a span of 10 days where you're expected to write four questions. Now, I do have 
an entire playlist all about exams, what my exam process looked like. I have a vlog about it. So if you're interested in that, definitely head to that playlist next. But I will say that unlike a lot of other programs, once you complete your exams in our department, there isn't another examination process. You're kind of done. A lot of other PhD programs may have a final defense that you would do at the end of your dissertation, but we don't necessarily have that. You could ask for that if that interests you, but in general, that's not a requirement for our degree. Then, like I said, you do have a language exam. The expectation is that you are at least fluent in one other language than your native language. So if you are an international student and you speak your language fluently and you speak English as a second language, you can petition for that to be your second language. But if you are somebody who is a native English speaker, then you are expected to obtain another language. Now I will say this doesn't necessarily necessitate that you speak fluent in that language. In fact, our language exam is pretty I would say easy. Um, you're usually expected to translate about a page, page and a half worth of literature or text that is related to your research in that other language. And then with a dictionary, you have about an hour to translate it. And then the evaluator kind of evaluates how well you translated it. So you're not expected to be fluent in another language, but they do expect you to have some reading comprehension or familiarity with another language as a PhD student in the World Arts and Cultures Dance Department. Then after you pass exams, then you just write your dissertation. There's also obviously field work where you collect your data about your dissertation, but that's very informal in our program. It's not anything that's too structured. You kind of define that with your committee. You are expected to write a prospectus and that is part of your examination process. But all in all, it's pretty straightforward. Coursework, um, language exam, oral or comprehensive exam, then you do your dissertation and then you graduate. Also, if you really like Q&A style videos like this, please leave questions in the comments, please, please, please. That way I can help make more videos like this to be useful for you. Another important question that I think a lot of people ask is, can you get a job with this degree? So a PhD in culture and performance is not a traditional degree. Most of the time you would probably see a PhD in art history or a PhD in performance studies or something like that. But this program is different and relatively new. I think it's only 15 years old. And so for a lot of people, there are concerns that you may not be able to get a job. I will say in my four and a half years of being a part of this program, I'm just now entering into my fifth year. I don't know a single person that's graduated and was unsuccessful in obtaining a job. I think it's a big myth in general that PhD students don't get jobs. And I should make a video about that eventually. But um, I will say specifically with the World Arts and Culture uh, Dance Department, especially if you are a dance scholar, but also if you're a culture studies, we get hired. We do a lot of good, important work. We have a rigorous program. We have really intelligent and well-known faculty within our department. And so I don't know anybody personally that has struggled to get a job afterwards. And not everybody who graduates wants to be a professor or goes into that type of uh, field. But I, again, everybody that I've known has gotten hired. So, which now kind of segues into the next part of this Q and A, which is coursework and expectations. And I think the first question that's super important that we address right now is, is this program interdisciplinary? Absolutely, yes. And I think it's because of this interdisciplinarity that it's easy for us or relatively easy for us to get jobs. However, I don't want to make it seem like it's super simple and as soon as you graduate, people are knocking down your door. That's not quite how it works. Because we're interdisciplinary, you're able to kind of imagine what your future would look like and then tailor your experiences, your professionalization, and even your coursework or exams to fit into more traditional sections or more traditional spaces in a way that maybe if you're an art historian, you have very rigid expectations, so you can't be that creative or innovative with your approaches. So it is about your professionalization and how proactive you are as a student, but generally, again, we get hired. Now, with all of that said, um, we are super interdisciplinary, and this could be for better or for worse. And the reason I say this is because being interdisciplinary gives you a lot of advantage over people who do things in a very traditional, very um, tried and true way. 
because those people don't really bring a lot of innovation um, to the field and thus it's easy for them to be looked over or replaced because they're not doing anything that's special or different. Being in an interdisciplinary program like the World Arts and Culture Dance Department or the PhD in Culture and Performance gives you an opportunity to really reimagine what the discipline is like, what research can be, and how to answer your research question. And that can make you competitive not just for jobs, but for fellowships, scholarships, and other life opportunities. However, I would be remiss to say that it's all butterflies and roses. In an interdisciplinary program, there's almost no structure. So if you are a person who needs structure, who needs guidance, who needs to know the next steps, this program might be a nightmare for you. There is a lot of inconsistency. There is a lot of kind of hands going up in the air saying, well, what do you think? What do you want to do? What do you think is best? And for some people that can be really freeing, but for others, it can send you into a spiraling hole of anxiety because you don't know what your expectations are. And that is something to be aware of because if you're not a proactive person, if you don't have a strong idea of what your goals are, or if you're like me and just don't understand what the hidden curriculum is, you may not actually know what is best for you and you may feel stagnant, stuck, or even like you're being like held behind or falling behind. So I think it's important before you enter into an interdisciplinary program to get a good idea of what grad school is about, what your goals are and expectations are. And then once you're in it, to really be vocal about those goals and expectations to avoid that sense of being lost or that sense of not making progress. The next question is, are PhD students in the World Arts and Culture Dance Department or in the PhD of Culture and Performance expected to take the majority of their courses in WACD, that's our acronym, or can they take it outside or how does that work? So I would say generally the expectation is that because we're an interdisciplinary program, we really do encourage our students to go explore as many classes and as many departments as possible. So for example, we do, like I said earlier, have four core courses that everybody has to take. But after that, it's kind of free flowing. I think there are a couple of other classes that you have to have that are electives in our WACD program, but there are many that are cross-listed in other departments. So you can kind of find a way to get around being in the department all the time. For example, my first year, I only took two WACD courses and all of my other coursework were in different departments like art history. But I think in general, the department is really encouraging of our students to go and explore, build relationships and to meet with other faculty because that's just the nature of interdisciplinarity. Then the next question is probably, is it easy as a PhD student in culture and performance to take other classes? And yeah, unlike undergrad, where there's just a ton of students all trying to get the same classes because you need them to graduate or what have you to uh, supplement your GEs or things like that. In a PhD program, there aren't really that many classes that have that much competition and there aren't really that many graduate students. So even if the class is full or even if you're not kind of if you're waitlisted for whatever reason or there's a hold on the class, you can generally reach out to professors and say, hey, I want to take this class. Do you mind? And I've gotten into every class that I've ever wanted to. So I don't think that that's really an issue. It's just about you having a good idea of how that fits into your degree plan and being thoughtful ahead of time, just in case it is a class with certain restrictions that you have the criteria or the circumstances, or you've spoken with the professor to make sure you get into it. But generally it's not a big deal. And um, UCLA more generally is really accommodating of graduate students taking courses around the campus. Are you required to teach or participate in any special projects as a PhD student in culture and performance at UCLA? No, it's not a requirement but it is um, an opportunity that does present itself. So within the World Arts and Culture Dance Department, a lot of our classes are dance, so a lot of our dance scholars teach those, but there are other more activist oriented or culture art oriented courses that you could teach, but you also can teach across campus. So I almost exclusively teach in ethnic studies, specifically African-American studies and Chicano Chicana studies. Um, also history, I've also taught a lot of history and art education. Okay, this is not about me. But generally what I'm saying is, you can teach in a variety of different locations and a variety of different departments. So if that is something you want, that is presented to you. But if you're not interested in teaching, it's not going to be forced onto you or you won't be expected to do it to graduate. As for special projects, 
the same thing. You're not expected to do a giant capstone or anything like that. But again, because we are an interdisciplinary program, if you choose your committee members correctly or in a way that's very thoughtful, you can use special projects as part of your dissertation. So I know somebody who did a video dissertation. So instead of writing an entire dissertation, they did an entire film that basically fulfilled the dissertation expectation. I know somebody who's doing a picture pop-up book that is part of their dissertation process. And then I know people that have done uh, curatorial projects and other types of artistic advent adventures or endeavors that are part of their PhD dissertation. So you do have a lot of options when it comes to how you will approach your research in the PhD in culture uh, and performance program. But there's not a lot of expectation of what you should do besides the basic requirements, which again is just coursework, exams, dissertation, and graduation. Now, I briefly talked about this a uh, little bit earlier, but this next question is, can you get funding or scholarships with this PhD program since it's non-traditional? And the answer is absolutely yes. I know people that have won giant national grants and fellowships for the work that they're doing in WACD or the World Arts and Cultures Dance Department. I also know people that have won scholarships within our department. I've won an art history scholarship within our department. Again, I think it's less about the title of your degree and more about the way you explain or describe your research and the work that you do. And so from there, I don't think it'll hinder you. In fact, I think it'll open more doors because you won't necessarily be restricted to disciplinary silos where you think you aren't eligible. Instead, you can really try to figure out where you fit in best and how to market yourself or present yourself in that way. Funding any graduate program is a lot of work and it can be a little more complex in an interdisciplinary program if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what your next steps are or how to prepare, which is why I have this grad funding playlist that you should head to next so you can have an idea of what the expectations are for grad school, how to get funded and what even is grad funding. If you found at least two things useful, hit the thumbs up so YouTube will share this video with others who might need it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.